Hello once again, I am Doc Rotten and this is Horror News Radio, the official gruesome magazine podcast. Back with me once again are the scariest, goriest, and bloodiest co-hosts on the net. And tonight we are reviewing Hannibal Season 1, Episode 6, Entree. Yes, we're going back to 2013 and we're revisiting this awesome show one more time because it deserves it. It's playing on Netflix and we just want to do it. Uh, so let's introduce the crew, starting off with Dave Dreyer. How are you doing, Dave? Hello, I'm doing well. Finally, episode six, we're there. Uh, this is the one you've been waiting for, right? <laughs> we're there. Okay. We've made it. We've five, made it to the entree. Yeah, you know, Five almost got there, but six really. Six, you know, right. six delivers. All right. Can't wait to hear what you think about that. All right. Also joining us is award-winning filmmaker Christopher G. Moore and one of the biggest fanables on the planet. Yeah, that I'm wearing my Hannibal planet. shirt. Let's see it. Oh. Shows you how to, to cook different parts of your body. Mm. Uh, I remember when, when the uh, the show first came on, I was like ordering Hannibal shirts like they're going out of style, which <laughs> I guess they have gone out of style. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm the only person wearing them. But um. But yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back. Glad to talk, especially about this episode that has uh, one of my favorite characters on the show. Yeah, Ooh. finally shows up. What a snarky guy he is. All right. Oh. Also, <laughs> also joining us is podcasting rock star and international cosplay queen, Vanessa Thompson. Vanessa, how you doing? Hello, doing good. I have worked up an appetite for this entree this evening. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> my five courses up until now. Now, this uh, it's important to note that you know the three of us uh, Christopher, Dave, and I, you know, we did the original Hannibal fan podcast, but we covered season two and three. You, however, this is your first watch. Mm -hmm. You're watching this series as if it were brand spanking new airing mm -hmm. right now. So that's got to be quite fun, right? It is a lot of fun. And I just know that you guys are in on this big secret that I don't know about yet. Um, a lot of secrets, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, a, I'm sure there's a lot to come. Uh, I'm loving it. I am loving this ride. I, you know, Dave's not wrong. This is a almost feels like a crescendo moment. This episode with everything that is uncovered and shared and discovered. There's a lot going on. Yeah, definitely, definitely. There's some. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yes, I'm excited about the new character too. He's a lot of fun. Yes, characters, <laughs> characters, characters actually yes. too. Right. All yes. right. Uh, so what we do here is we we, we uh, give our first impression. We talk about the film and then we wrap it up and give uh, a favorite scene, which we're going to do for this as well. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Stick around for all that. Uh, but what are we reviewing tonight? Uh, this Hannibal thing. What is it? All right. We're talking about <laughs> there's a lot of text here. So it's smaller than usual. <laughs> we'll see what this old man can do this. This was Entree, episode six. It uh, debuted May 2nd, 2013. That's where we're going out, 2013. Uh, the director is Michael Reimer. Ra Reimer. And the writers are Kai Wu and Brian Fuller. Uh, it's created by Brian Fuller based on characters from the book Red Dragon. Important to say, Thomas Harris is the writer. Uh, we get uh, actually we get three new characters. How can I? How, I can't believe I forgot. Uh, Eddie Izzard joins us as Doctor Abel Gideon. Uh, Raul Esparza joins us as Doctor Frederick Chilton. Yeah, Christopher. Yeah, and Anna Klumsky is here as Miriam Lass. Um, we'll find, yeah, we'll revisit, uh, where do we remember Anna Clumsy from? That's interesting. All right. Hugh Dancy, of course, is Will Graham. Mads Mickelson is the, is the Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Uh, Caroline the Harris is, uh, Dr. Alana Bloom. Hetian Park is Beverly Katz. Lawrence Fishburne is Jack Crawford. Scott Thompson is Jimmy Price. Aaron Abrams, Brian Zelser, and Lara Jean Horostecki is, I, I, I hope I pronounced that right, is Freddie Lowndes. Uh, the, the, the synopsis for this episode is a nurse at the Baltimore State Hospital for the criminally insane is brutally murdered by a patient, Dr. Abel Gideon, in a manner reminiscent of the Chesapeake Ripper, who, by the way, was just mentioned a few episodes ago, who uh, hasn't committed a murder in two years. The same number of years Gideon has been incarcerated. While Graham tries to discover whether Gideon truly is the Ripper, Crawford receives a phone call, apparently from the real Ripper, who plays a recorded voice of Miriam Lass, a trainee Crawford had consulting on the Chesapeake Ripper case two years ago, previously when she disappeared. That is a mouthful, and I made it through <laughs> it. Holy cow. 
That was unexpected. All right, uh, what we got, let's get our first impressions. And Vanessa, I really want to start with you because I kind of know the other two, and uh, you're going to be the big surprise. So, what did you think of this episode and the new characters? What's happening here? Why, why, what? <laughs> There's a lot happening. First of all, I love Eddie Izzard. I was so happy to see him in this because he is just. I, I miss seeing him in a dress, though. I kind of wish you would have seen him in a dress <laughs> at some point. Maybe, maybe yes. we will. Uh, <laughs> um, but he is just. Well, he just dances across the screen, doesn't he? When he performs yes. and when he's in a scene. I I just love the, the when Jack is in there talking to him and he's like, you know, it would be, it's rude to tell them not to call back or something unless they can't. He's just so <laughs> smarmy kind of, and I just love it so much. And, you know, I, I don't believe that he's the Ripper. I, I don't believe that. Well, I think at this point I can, I can assume who it is, but <laughs> uh, pretty, yes, you might be able to. pretty strongly <laughs> um, but it's 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 a fun little dancer playing and um obviously chilton i just love chilton too he's so he he's a, he's a lot like uh gideon isn't he just on the outside instead mm. of behind bars wow. um and i'm excited to see the relationship between he and and hannibal play out. Uh, I I really, really loved this episode. Some really intense things. We were just talking about a movie that involved, you know, eyeball torture. Oh, <laughs> this, no. This one really goes for it. Oh. <laughs> this one really, really does. Um, no, you know, and a really fascinating uh, kills, right, that we see. Oh my God! Do we ever? Oh, all right. Well, that that sounds like fun. I can't wait. To <laughs> all right, Dave Dreyer, you're up next, sir. Uh, you kind of stated this is the one that turned you originally uh, into a fanable, right? Uh, did it live up a second viewing? It really did. Yeah, very much so. Uh, this is a, a stellar episode, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, probably the best of season one that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm trying not to get too far ahead because we do these because I, 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 I get them confused when we start talking about them. Mm -hmm. So I try to keep them so they're fresh in my mind. But uh, <laughs> I mean, this is definitely where we see, uh, you know, Hannibal kind of reveal himself for what we've suspected he was all along. Now we know for sure uh, he is. Uh, I, I kind of like the correlation to Silence of the Lambs. A little bit, we get a lot of that feel with when they're going down to talk to Doctor Gideon. You know, Very the cells so. look a lot the same. Uh, the way that Jack brings uh, Miriam in, very much like he does with uh, Clarice. You know, he seems to have. Uh, although this is all taking place before the Silence of the Lamb storyline, he seems to have a thing for wanting to take young female go getters and pulling them in, perhaps over their head, uh, before they should be doing some of these things. Obviously. It, causes uh, you know it well i don't want to spoil anything uh you know things uh <laughs> things get interesting with miriam um but uh i just like the whole the whole way this whole thing played out the the dr chilton being in now he's just such a swarmy uh, <laughs> swarmy dude yeah and uh and, and gideon is fantastic i mean he really he's uh He's a great character. I, I really like him a lot. And I, uh, as I'm talking this, I remember kind of where, how his story arc continues through the upcoming. <laughs> yes. We have some, we have some real fun coming up with him. We uh, do so, indeed. Yeah. So this, this, this is a really, really strong episode. And for me, this is kind of where uh, Hannibal really kind of starts. It, yeah, it certainly finds its footing. That's for sure. Yeah. All right, Christopher G. Moore. This this is also the episode you may have been waiting for with Chilton being introduced. Well, I, I, there's so many great things about this episode. First of all, there's homages out the wazoo to Science of the Lambs in this episode everywhere. everywhere. Abel Gideon was a character created that's supposed to be a, an homage to Anthony Hopkins' version of Hannibal Lecter. I um, could see that. Which, you know, even um, uh, I think even Brian Fuller had said that that was that he's uh, uh, a pretender to the throne. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's, That's so fun. Um, 
And and the Chesapeake River, of course, was always sort of the nickname people gave for Hannibal Lecter's murders in the books and stuff. So, um, so yeah, and that's why he comes off like he's very, very, you know, very much, you know, the Anthony Hopkins, not 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 to the level of Anthony Hopkins, but you know, that more the uh, I'd say great value version, but you know, he's. <laughs> You know, he's still hamming it up that way, but, you know, uh, but still good, you know, because, because then, you know, th there's several moments that where they, they pull off of moments we've seen in the books and in the movies, you know, everything from uh, his ability to control his pulse, you know, um, that there's a reference uh, that they actually use a line in the movies that was in the book where he's like his, its pulse never got above 85. Any when he, even when he ate her tongue and what does Hannibal Lecter serve to his, people that he calls a chatty lamb, <laughs> chatty little lamb, <laughs> chatty little lamb. Um, he even uses the phrase, you know, uh, like having an old friend for dinner, did, which is the yeah. famous last line from a science of lambs. Um, Miriam Lass is basically a stand in for Clarice. So again, another sort of pretender to the throne. And there's <clears throat> several lines that she uses that are from some of the books. And also there's one, there's a few lines that she uses that are actually Will Graham's from red dragon. Um, so yeah. And, and even, even how, um, uh, Abel Gideon uses a thing to pick the lock on his handcuff and the same way that, uh, that, uh, um, Hannibal Lecter does it in Science of Lamb. So there's it a really lot of, it does seem like Brian Fuller built this up to be a crescendo of things. coming. Oh together. yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it has all those elements of it. Um, and, um, you know, and then also Dr. Chilton, when he first meets Will Graham, he's like, uh, that's a temporary ID badge. And that's, that's a line from science lambs where it's like, that's a temporary FBI badge. You're not really FBI. Are you Clarice, you know? And so like, <laughs> so that they actually take one of those lines and give it to Chilton, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, there's so many different things, even from when, um, uh, Alana Bloom walks in there, it's very reminiscent of, you know, when Clarice, walks in there i mean there's like so many different variations but i just love and i love how he uses all these references that we that for those of us that are big fans like you know i'm like you know i feel like it, if i had to do a drinking game i would be dead by now uh, <laughs> well it makes so much more sense with you explaining that too with uh when chilton's like talking to dr bloom saying oh he remembers you he's been waiting for you. So it makes a lot more sense to have that kind of relationship between the two of them mirroring that, you know, Clarice and Hannibal relationship. Yeah. And, and, and even like how they pull stuff from like red dragon, you know, cause the, in red dragon, they use Freddie Lowndes to sort of like get to the tooth fairy mm -hmm. to come out by, by making fun of his manhood. And so in this one, they sort of do the same thing with, with Hannibal Lecter, um, you know, trying to act like, Oh, this Abel Gideon, he's the real, He's the real mm -hmm. thing, you know, he's, you know, and so, like, and, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, you have all those different elements. Um, and, and also, um, what I love about this is we get to see, you know, uh, Lecter has been manipulating people, all these different people throughout the series so far. And this one, you can see how he just, he just fucks with, mm -hmm. with Jack Crawford so bad. Oh my God. <laughs> those phone calls is like oh man this is so bad you know and then, and then also we get the sort of flashbacks to his you know which which you know uh jack uh jack crawford he had that sort of close relationship with clarice you know she was like the star pupil you know although they sort of make her more of a star pupil in this than they did like uh in the books in the movie because i think she was more like a in the top quarter and 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 Miriam lass is more in the top five percent so um, so they do change some stuff, but I just love that how they still make it its own thing, even though it's a bully base of all these different elements that that made all these different properties work so well from the literature to the movies. Um, but again, he makes his own thing. And and when, when you don't have the money to be able to do things like Clarice Starling, um, you do your own thing. Or, or when you're having to walk, you know, in the shoes of what Anthony Hopkins created, you create this other character that sort of allows him to play around with that. Um, although it's still my belief that when we get into the later season, we get to see uh, Mads sort of emulate a little bit more of the Anthony Hopkins character once he's caught, but that's yep. just me. Definitely. Um, so yeah. They yeah. catch it, him? No, I'm kidding. 
<laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> he goes on a whim. It's like he, the A team. He just goes <laughs> killing people in different towns with his crazy psychopathic <laughs> friends. Um, <laughs> Uh, although I do, I do, I do, well, I do love that scene where, where uh, there's like so, there's so many great lines. Uh, like when Will Graham's like going into the, the the institution, and he's like, I feel like if I go in here, they're <laughs> never gonna return. And and uh, and then the Jack Carver's like, I'll make sure that you return. And he's like, for now, you yeah, know? this and then, time. And then another one was like where Will Graham is like, um, not Will Graham. Oh uh, yeah, Freddie Lowndes. They're having that meeting. With Freddie Lowndes. And uh, and they talk about all the different people that could be psychopaths or whatever, and about everybody there at the table. And he's like, well, I guess we're all, all these psychopaths are working together or something like that, okay. something to that degree. So anyway, I'll shut up now because I could just I could talk for hours. <laughs> As you guys already know, if you've watched the episode, oh man, but I love yeah. This episode is right up my alley because it's somebody that's a Science and Lambs is probably my yeah, it's my top my top ten movies ever made. It's a perfect film, and so. All these elements that are in this, I was like a kid in the beginning. Oh, that's another <laughs> one! I know that one! I know that one! So, anyway, moving on. Yeah, Gideon is a is a great way to make this version of Hannibal better because now you compare him to the Gideon version of Anthony Hopkins instead of straight up Anthony Hopkins, so it it dilutes that that har harsher comparison. Um, my opinion. Because now you you know it, it's a little bit more self-contained, right? And it, it all becomes um, better for it. Uh, there, the Gideon character was a lot of fun when it got introduced when he got introduced originally, and uh, and throughout the rest of the season, uh, for as long as he sticks around. And I, uh, I, I, I just love the way Eddie Izzard plays him. Uh, it's just wonderful. It, it's so subdued but yet really uh in his wheelhouse it really is a strong performance and, and a great a great character um all the all the new characters are fun and and the interaction i love the scene when we know that alana and will are going to go in and you know individually and interview uh gideon but we get it all kind of cut together the conversations you know you know we don't know who's talking to who maybe uh, and and the, even the questions and the answers kind of blend together, as it as it goes from Alana Bloom being the one asking the question to Will Graham, and I thought that was wonderfully done, uh, really engaging, really interesting and different. The um, the first fifteen minutes of this were insanely brutal for me. I thought when Will revisits the murder uh, in in the Will Graham way that it was it. It really was hard for me to watch. I thought it was incredibly brutal, especially for what NBC, right? Like that. Oh, wow. Because um, that, that eye gouged. Did, did we see that? Did they, or was that? Is it this like an it, uncut version? It cut. It cuts away, so it doesn't necessarily. You, I don't you, know. you see the thumbs go in and then it cuts away and then you see the blood coming out of her eye sockets. Right. But it, it, you don't necessarily see, you know, anything or you don't see the pop, but you get it. You don't hear yeah. uh, not like some movies are where you just like Yeah, squirt. Um but it, at the same time it was just so it it was that it did remind me of uh like when uh the police officer officer turns around in Hannibal. Uh, or Science of the Lambs, rather, and uh, Hannibal's there, and he's you know quickly does that to him, and it just it's it's that quick and brutal, and it just strikes right. Oh man, um, because we first see it with uh, uh, with uh, the a Abel Gideon character, and then we of course see Will there when he revisits, us, and it's just like oh my gosh, just so so really rough, and yeah. For me, this this is when I do remember I was starting to get a fan, but this 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 episode sold it for me. Um, definitely was uh, a fanable at this point, and uh, even though I didn't know what a fanable was yet, <laughs> uh, I was one and didn't know it. Uh, yeah, I was I was buying the shirts too. I think uh, this is. A, I'm trying to remember when I started really get into the the shirts as well. Cause I got I got a couple of a number of the shirts. Once, yeah, because a lot of those uh, twenty four hour t shirt oh, sites and, right. and stuff were turning right. out like different ones. Yeah, 
and uh, and even some of them, I guess, the actual TV show got into it because you actually see little Hannibal logo on them, NBC's Hannibal. So yeah, it it got really cool for a while there, to where there would be different ones because I've got I've got so many different variations. Uh, I think one of my favorites is the there's a there's a Rorschach between Hannibal and uh, mm. the, the uh, what's her name Bedelia. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, that, that, that I think that's the cool thing is like there's just a the fan base is really what kept this show alive. It, it literally did. It literally yeah. did because I don't know if we were going to get a second season, and uh, the campaign helped NBC give it another shot. NBC yeah, kind of just all right, whatever, just go do it. <laughs> well, especially when they moved it to like times that were not as advantageous or whatever, um, but people still were tuning in and sending in campaigns. I remember they were sending a little um, uh, flower crowns and stuff. And mm. uh, but yeah, this uh, I love this show so much. Now, when when did it move to Fridays? Because man, they were there for a while. It was bouncing all over the place. I feel and like then, at, at least the last season, probably. Yeah, because eventually it lands on Fridays, but it didn't stop it. Didn't stop it. Uh, no. yeah, like a few years later, uh, Exorcist would, you know, spend two years there too. So. Yeah, and I d- just rewatching this has really made me pay attention to things a whole lot more, especially just the little slight reactions that Hannibal makes, because mm. that last scene with uh, the wine, where you get to see, what, I, I guess, I guess this is probably what probably what made Dave sort of. Uh, you know, like the show a lot more is because we actually get to see the more, uh, the more forceful Hannibal. You get to see like, he's not someone to be messed with because most of the time it's like, it's, <laughs> you're my dog. <laughs> he's, he's gearing up too. <laughs> I got a little bit scared for a second there that, uh, the Hannibal showed up. Um, but, um, because you get to see, <laughs> you get to see him go crazy. And, like ducks turn into a werewolf and go after Uh-oh. somebody. Either that somebody needs to eat something. Um, but um, but yeah, but I the, the when you see that flashback and you see what actually happens and then it comes back to him and you see him and he and he's trying to be like you know being supportive to to a Jack and he's he drinks it and all of a sudden you see the corner of his lip go up like a little mm-hmm. bit of a smile. Yeah, I was like, oh, that evil evil. Fucker. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's oh god. I mean, I, and it's just so small things. He doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, the the, the evil guy on the train tracks type. You know, you just gotta, you know, a mm-hmm. little bit of it there, and mm-hmm. and that's the thing. He's always trying to hold it in, but there's always a little bit of like hint of like he's enjoying this. You know. Yeah, I like that he snuck up. You know, he took his shoes off when he was off screen. Yeah. Went up. That that, yeah. that was a great shot, you know, down on the carpet, and you see his feet coming, and like, oh, no one, yeah. Uh, uh, Vanessa, you had to be happy that uh, Lana Bloom is back, and now we get another yes. character for you to get behind with. Uh, yes. Uh, what was her name? Uh, I forgot it already. Anna, Miriam, Miriam Lass. Miriam yeah, Lass. Miriam Lass. Uh, what, what, did she live up to your expectations for her coming back? Are you still a fan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, you <laughs> were me that I, had to, I had to process the question for a second. <laughs> I didn't understand. Uh, no. Yeah. I, you know, spoilers. That's going to be my favorite scene <laughs> is when oh, he's nice. coming in like that. I, you know, she was interesting to follow. And I, it makes you question like, so at what point did Hannibal know her connection to Crawford? Right. Did he know Crawford at that point? Uh, before she sees him no like that's kind of the first in the whole world of these people right that's the first connection point where mm-hmm. she finds like someone who was associated with this murder or this victim at some point um so that's kind of where he starts his fuckery right with the uh, with jack all these years ago and that's just uh brutal just brutal what he he's been through what he's being put through that decrepit arm oh, that man. he finds, you know, oh. cause you, you don't know the whole time. And I guess we still don't know. Right. But having never found a body, having never heard anything else, he's kind of been racked by this for the last two years. Right. Uh, and I, uh, I have, I have watched ahead a little, so I know that this, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, 
where this telescope is. Uh, what, are, what are those things called? Where they oh, have. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, observatory. <laughs> observatory. Yeah. 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 It's going to come into play again. Oh. Um, I oh know. my God, it does. Yeah. A couple mm -hmm. times. Now. I know. Uh, and stupid Freddie Lowndes. God, I hate her so much. <laughs> but she was so necessary, wasn't she? She was yeah. absolutely necessary in this particular episode. And. You know, and her what you said, her line about saying just a bunch of psychopaths helping each other out is true. It's yep. not not wrong at all. And I I I don't hate that she got her moment there. Yeah. You know, she, she has great hair. She does have great hair, and she yeah, she's that, always wearing gloves. She's wearing gloves. I was thinking always. that too when oh, she always. walked in to um to interview Abel Gideon. She's got mm -hmm. gloves on, and I'm like, is she scared of leaving fingerprints? Yes, <laughs> yes, she's there because she's there. First, a lot of times, right? Maybe. Ever Maybe. since her introduction, she's worn gloves. Oh man. Uh, yeah, but then she's then she's writing her articles in the nude. <laughs> so. I, I'm I'm game. Just go. I have for DNA it. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dave Anna Klumsky. Anna Klumsky. Uh, that's a name that people may remember from the '90s. The bees. The bees. <laughs> my girl. Oh my gosh. Um, she and she still looks at she still looks the same. Yeah, she, does. she really does. She, well, yeah. she, looks, she looks like an adult, but yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Stretched her out. You can, you can tell it's her. <laughs> that's that's the reason she became a wanted to work for the FBI to sort of profile bees. Oh, she's gonna that's solve it. yeah. Yeah, she's a bee profiler. Uh, but I thought I <laughs> I thought she was great though. I thought she was fantastic in this role. So uh, yeah, for our, sure. All right. Well, let, let's go ahead and wrap this up. We'll, you know, give our our final thoughts, and then if we want to give it a score, throw a score in there. But most importantly, I want a favorite scene. Uh, that's going to be fun. This, there's a lot in here to choose from. But before we do, uh, if you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe uh, down below and help us out. If you, you know, hit the like button, the dislike button, either way, let us know what you think in the comments hit the bell and you can get reminded when new ones come out we're going to be covering the entire first season and then we might i, I think we might revisit all three yeah it's, it's in the cards <laughs> it's in the cards um all right uh so please do that now let's do this our uh yeah let's wrap it up and vanessa you're up first so uh <laughs> give a give us the skinny there Oh, well, this is a great episode. I think we all agree. This is a pivotal episode in the first season. Um, I give it a five. I with it, Before everything Chris pointed out, and then now with all the backstory that I have, it's even, it's just elevated it so much more. Um, really, really great, really fun episode. So many things revealed, so many different avenues we could take, so many little chatty lambs having their tongues eaten. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, as I said before, my favorite scene is that moment where Miriam Lass has gotten a little too close to Hannibal Lecter and what his plans are um, or who he is and just that, the first time I saw it, because I've seen this episode twice now, the first time I saw it, I was so, it took my breath away because I didn't expect to see him there. I could, you, and if you're not, you've just seen this drawing that she's found this drawing. So you don't know, is she going to hide it? Is she going to get away? And then all of a sudden you see his little, <laughs> his little feet back there. And it just really, it really took my breath away in that moment. And it, you know, and we still don't know at that point. Is she alive? Is she dead? What's going on? Where is she? Uh, what has he done to her? How, how did he prepare her? <laughs> we mm. need to know these questions, answers to these questions. Um, no, I, I've i seen further, so I know it just goes up from here. But this right. episode was really fantastic. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, Dave, you're up next, sir. Lay it on. I am? Me already? <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the, you know, just kind of reiterating, this is definitely for me where the series really, really hits its stride. And uh, Vanessa's right. It just gets better and crazier as we progress here from this point on. I, I really like the addition of Gideon and, uh, and um, Chilton and all the rest of them. Uh, just know there's such fun things ahead. Uh, fun, things. Doing, fun things ahead. <laughs> uh, favorite scene. I'm going to have to go with uh, 
uh, I'm probably, Doc, I'm probably stealing this from you, but the, the, when Will does his little thing there at the beginning where he puts mm. himself into place, and that really was brutal. And I don't know why it sticks in my mind too, Doc, that there was something with the eye gouging. Uh, that when it was at, live? At one point, when, when it was live, that they cut it or they edited it or something. I I don't know. I could be I wrong. Remember. Yeah, yeah, I could be wrong. But uh, that's just brutal. And uh, again, uh, much praise to Hugh Dancy. He can play Psycho really, really well. Because he's yeah, he's the, he was just just terrifying as he's uh, as he's going through those uh, those motions. So uh, I I really like this uh, a lot. I, I I can't call it my favorite of the season yet because I got to watch the rest of them. But uh, <laughs> to this point, it is definitely my favorite of the season. Nice, nice. All right. Well, this is the one we all want to hear. Christopher <laughs> Moore, you know, let us have it. Tell us what, what's up. Well, what can I say? Uh, what kind of accolades can I give it that I haven't already given it? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I love this episode. And I think, uh, you know, if, if you're going to try to win me over, throw a lot of Science of Lambs references in there. And I'm all about it. But again, we, we get introduced to Dr. Chilton, one of my favorite characters of this series. Who's, and later on, he has a lot of humdingers when it comes to a lot of lines he throws out there. <laughs> makes me laugh a lot because he's that sort of, uh, he's that snarkiness that, that adds a lot of humor to the series, even when he's being <laughs> tortured by Hannibal Lecter, which is very appropriate, you know, if you, if you saw Science of Lambs. Um, but yeah, yeah. And I love, I love uh, Ab Abel Gideon. I think um, I love how this show, We'll take people like Eddie Izzard. We'll take people that are known more for their comedy and give them more dramatic type roles. And I, I love how he sort of, you know, he plays around with it and does his own, his own little thing that has those elements of Anthony Hopkins, but still, you know, has a, a has a element of humor to it and snarkiness. That's cool. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, this, this one, they definitely start, you know, start, start to build what this series uh, becomes with you know the expansion of seeing more of what Hannibal's doing, um, and at the same time, I just love how they take a lot of these elements from the the literature and the movies, and and create their own thing that's that's just as great, if not better, and entertaining. Um, so this is definitely a standout episode of the season. If I had to give it a rating, it would be a five out of five. No, <laughs> no doubt about that. You're gonna hear that from me a lot. I might as well just you might just uh, use a video of me <laughs> saying five out of five. Um, but um, you know, I I could pick a million different scenes, but I think the the scene that I want to pick is um, I think it's the scene that really sort of is the the, the crossover for the Hannibal Lecter character. Mm -hmm. and that's having Hannibal to deliver that line. It's good to have old friends over for dinner. Um, just that dinner scene, I think. I love that because I think, you know, when this series first came out, it was it was already in the sort of the shadow of this film that won all these awards, and Hannibal, you know, uh, Anthony Hopkins won an Academy Award for his performance, and so how are you going to live up to that? And I think that Mads has done that, has done his own thing, and, and I think he's up there just as he's up there in the same realm and i think um him delivering that line in his own way and and making it his own for this show i think it brings a little tear to my eye just thinking oh, about it nice. um but yeah yeah I, I love this show so much just i'm glad that i could rewatch it with you guys because it's sort of like uh it's you know it's my favorite tv show why am i getting emotional it's my oh. favorite tv show uh <laughs> I'm, I'm an idiot. So what Hannibal does to you gets in your mind, Chris. I guess so. Yes. <laughs> whom, whom. Um, by the way, we didn't have that again. So, um, but uh, it, it's it's a show that's inspired me so much from the visuals, from the dialogue, from the acting, just how you can take you can you can translate things that have been made before or literature and create your own thing. And it still stands out just as well. And I think, you know, watching it again has made me really appreciate a lot of the, the hard work and art that went into making this show, from the production design to the costumes to the music. Well, I don't think we ever talk about the music, but the music is amazing how it's sort of almost like unsettling. It's not like a normal score for certain parts of it. Um, 
and just everything comes together to make it great. But anyway, I, I just love that I could ha have these weekly meetings with you guys and talk about this because this makes my heart very happy as an artist. It, it makes me want to make something on this level or at least just, just a, a, a liver's worth <laughs> yeah. uh, wow. of what they're doing on this show. Nice. Nice. I, uh, yeah, this, this, this is an incredible episode. Uh, you definitely want to stick around for this because if this is the one that's going to, if you haven't seen them, you, this is the one that's going to seal the deal and you're going to want to watch all of it, all of it. And you're going to want to consume it now. Uh, it, it, it really boils down. Uh, well, there's two, th there's a lot going on for it and, and the references and the whole mythology of it. And, you know, it, it's just, it's weaving together its own world of, of Hannibal. But for me, I think it's the cast. It's just this growing cast of characters and there's more to come this season. It's just remarkable. I, uh, they, they just really give every little corner, this special little place, uh, you know, to, to prosper and, and to enjoy, uh, characters bouncing off each other, interacting with each other, conflicting with each other at times, uh, uh, you know, and, and Jack, who, who was, you know, really just at first was just this gruff, you know, cop, <laughs> you know, kind of like the, you know, the boss, right. Is now this full fleshed character, you know, between the last episode and what's happening here, we, he's got a heart and a soul and we know this character now, um, you know, we're, uh, Will's unraveling and we're, and we're learning more and more about his, uh, his makeup. We, we might not understand his character in, in the same way we do Jack, but at the same, and in, in another way, we, we, we are starting to get how he acts and, and behaves and, and motivations. And then of course, Hannibal's coming to life as well. This, I, I, I think you're right, Christopher. This is the first time we actually see Hannibal in action. Is that right? Uh, do we see him in action before? I don't. I, th I think we see. I I can't remember, but I I think I think we see the things that he's done. Right. But right. and and we see like like when he's made stuff from people like the lungs mm -hmm. and stuff. But we there was a scene that was cut out where he did we did see the him attack the girl that he stole the lungs from, but they cut that scene out. So we really don't. I don't think we see. Um, we just see the the end product of some of this stuff. Right, so this right. is the first time we actually see him attack somebody. Yeah, so it's it's starting to break through that, right? You know, and, and let us in on a little bit more about him. Uh, uh, it, uh, yeah, the the mind fuckery, as somebody said it, it's, it's <laughs> all over the place. Um, you know, and they're going back and forth, and they're trying to trick. Gideon and you know somebody else has already tricked them and they're trying to bring out the yeah you know, everybody's messing with everybody it's like god you can't trust anybody James mm -hmm. get out of here. yeah even Jack Crawford you know it's like uh let's get Freddie Loves in here <laughs> trying to well trying to make and then like Lecter trying to make Jack Crawford sort of people question his stability with the okay. phone calls in the same way that people question Will Graham's stability right and it's uh yeah so so interesting and um yeah, it's, 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 this is a great episode. And yeah, five. Yeah, let's just get all five. Uh, favorite scene. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you might have taken two or three of mine. Um, I'm, I'm going to go. Um, can we just go with the entire uh, interview uh, with uh, Alana and, and Will, Alana Bloom and, and Will Graham uh, with uh, Abel Gideon as they're just trying to explore, you know, why do you think, you know, why now? Why are you revealing yourself now? And and his the way he acts, you know, even to the point um, the way Gideon like leans up against the wall occasionally just feels like Anthony Hopkins, right? Like the character is just, you know, he's obviously not. I mean, because he's he's there's it, it's different enough, but yet there's these subtle shades, and it's just really is wonderful to watch. And it helps that you know the. The interaction, the scene is is very familiar with those who are fans of that movie, so it it helps build that. Um, and yeah, I just I just really I really dug that. I really just loved how the you know, the, the quick pro quo there. <laughs> well, it's it's also um, it, it's it to me it's also similar to the intercuts that happen at Science Lambs when Clarice shows up at Buffalo Bill's house and intercuts between the FBI 
So there's a little to me, there's a little bit of comparison to that as well when you're cutting between two different scenes. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. All right, well, there you go. There's our review of uh, episode six of the first season of Hannibal Entree. We finally got it, our entree. <laughs> and now I guess we have some dessert options coming next. I, I don't know. If, uh, well, entree is <laughs> before the main course. Oh, is it before the main course? See, I know nothing. Mm. I know nothing. I just know that there's a fromage coming, and that's There's going to be some cheese in there, that's yeah. Great, right? that's cheese. <laughs> be cutting the cheese. <laughs> Will. All right. Uh, I hope you, those who are listening, are still with us. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we hope you're enjoying this again. Subscribe, like, let us know what you think. Uh, appreciate. It. Thank you very much, uh, Dave, Vanessa, Christopher. Of course. Thank you for joining me. This was a great discussion, and I look forward to many more. There's 13 episodes in season one, this, so we still are not even quite halfway. Almost halfway. Almost. Mm-hmm. I'm like having friends over for conversations. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's let's say good night while we can. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night.